sisters. How's everybody? I hope you're doing absolutely fabulous today. Um, this episode, I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite all-time quotes ever. Um, it was by Theodore Roosevelt. <clears throat> and the quote is, um, comparison is the thief of joy. And as soon as I heard that quote, it really did like just change everything for me. And I keep that in mind um, as I live my daily life because it's really, really, really hard to compare yourself to other people. I think, um, you know, I just got ready for work, so I have a makeup on and stuff like that. But typically when I come on here, um, I intentionally... I'm either getting ready or 90% of the time don't have makeup on um, or I'm in pajamas or a hoodie or my workout clothes or whatever because I don't want to be somebody who's like telling you that you're unique and beautiful and, and to love yourself the way that you are and then show up on camera with 10 pounds of makeup. Even though I love makeup and I wear makeup to work every single day and I think it's amazing, I also think I'm beautiful without it. And so I don't want, um, you know, not that I'm like, you know, the prettiest girl in the world or anything, but I don't want any of you guys, um, you know, to feel like intimidated or anything because I'm on here and telling you to do all these things and I, I look all dolled up and, you know, ready for work and look like I have my life together. And truth is, is I don't, I don't at all. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing recording these videos. I just know that, you know, somebody out there needs the stories that I'm telling and the, the experience that I have because I needed it. So um, the, the point is not to be beautiful on social media. The point is to get out the message that I'm trying to get to you guys um, without the distraction of the mask like I currently have on my face right now. Um, even though I love it, makeup holds a very special place in my heart. <laughs> But um, anyways, so uh, when I was uh, in high school, comparison, no, scratch that, from I think birth until um, recently, comparison was a huge part of my life. I think I probably ident would identify my personality as being somebody who constantly compared myself to other people. I mean, legitimately, everyone everything. I, I didn't know anything unique to myself. I feel like everything that I knew about me was a comparison to other people or was something that I was trying to do to be like somebody else. Nothing about me was unique to me. It was all very fake. And um, down to what I presented myself as, the way that I acted, um, the things that I did with my hair and my makeup and you know, body image, which I've talked about a lot, um, but not even having to do with, you know, self-image type stuff or body positivity, having to do with um, woe is me playing the victim all the time. Like, you know, I had a very, very tough time in high school and junior high when it came to outside sources that growing up as a child, before I hit my teenage years, I grew up in a very good family and um, it was it was structured very well and stuff. But for some reason, I was never happy. And, um, you know, as I started getting older, a lot of things happened to me, but for some reason, I always felt like the grass was greener on the other side. Um, and as I've gotten older, I've come to realize that it's not, um, I, you know, lived my life in such a way to, you know, try and be the prettiest girl, um, or the smartest girl, or I had to be the best at everything because I constantly felt like I wasn't worthy. And um, once I reached the point where I felt like I had a, a, a career and I worked, um, I used to work at a restaurant called Tilt a Kilt. And, um, you know, I was considered pretty and technically on a modeling contract. I thought for some reason that my the people I was around were going to change and the way that I saw my life and how I felt myself about myself was going to change. But the truth is it was only worse because nothing was unique to me because I, I was constantly not, not only was I around girls in general, but I was around models all day long. Like literally these girls that I worked with were absolutely gorgeous. And I, I came to realize that we see these people around right like walk into a hooters or a tilted kilt or you know look at a ford magazine or swimsuit magazine or you see these girls and these women and you know or even um famous people like music artists and stuff people like cardi b or you know even ta like taylor swift i mean um 
Carrie Underwood, whoever, whatever type of music you listen to, we look at these people and we think they're so pretty and they, because they're pretty and that's the first thing that we see, we think that they have more than we do or they haven't suffered like we have. And the truth is, is that that's not true because I will tell you firsthand that I was one of those girls who had, was very independent and had um, anything that I could hope to have at, you know, 21, 22 years old. And I um, was the pretty girl and I, I did model and, um, you know, it, I was friends with a lot of these girls. And what I came to realize is just because you're pretty or just because you have money or just because you have nice things, that does not mean that you're all of a sudden going to be happy or that you're all of a sudden nothing's going to touch you. There was a statistic that I read in psychology class this week that said um, suicide rate is higher in people that are wealthy and white, basically, you know, not, not that race has anything to do with it, but just people that are more, um, that's just what the statistic said, but people that are more successful and have more money tend to be more lonely because they feel like they're constantly comparing themselves and trying to get to the top. And then once they get there, they realize that that doesn't buy happiness. You guys being pretty doesn't buy happiness. You know, a lot of the stuff that you're consuming in the media on social media, you're, you're watching influencers. Um, you know, those people have hair and makeup. They do photo shoots, um, to build content for like month, a month or two at a time. Um, you know, this is not, they're just like out and about and snapping a picture. No, a lot of hard work and effort goes into that because they get paid to do what they do, but it's not real life. It's fake outside of the camera. You know, they may be in one room taking a photo and looking beautiful. And in the next room, their house is in shambles. They're like, you know, their marriage maybe isn't working or the relationship or, um, maybe they're drowning in, you know, debt, or maybe, you know, they're in an abusive relationship or whatever. But the point is, is that just because what you see on social is seems perfect, doesn't mean that it is. And it's not. Nobody's perfect and nothing's perfect. What you're seeing on social media is the 1% of people's lives that's the most perfect or the most appealing. And that's what they choose to share with you. 99% of people aren't coming on here, um, you know, spilling their deepest, darkest secrets and talking about, you know, real life stuff. They're, they're, putting their best foot forward as and not, not not that that's a bad thing or a negative thing but don't you know you can aspire to be like somebody you can have people that um that inspire you and and that you look up to as role models without comparing yourself to them right you could be like oh I want to be somebody like Oprah or Michelle Obama or I want to be like um you know, Demi Lovato has made a really big comeback. I want to have that sort of strength or I want to have that um, type of success financially, spiritually, personally, relationship wise, whatever, without comparing yourself and making yourself feel less than, right? Oh, um, you know, this so-and-so on social media is perfect and has perfect hair and makeup and I will never have that. So therefore I'm not worthy. No. Sally Susan, direct sales marketer, probably doesn't do her own hair and makeup, right? So, or didn't even take her own photos or whatever. But that doesn't mean that she's less worthy. That doesn't mean that you're less worthy. But don't compare yourself to that. There's nothing wrong with being an influencer or doing direct sales or anything like that. But I'm saying just don't, don't compare yourself to stuff that's not real life, right? Especially like in movies and things like that. I remember um, there was, a, social media wasn't really big. We were still doing MySpace up until like, I graduated high schools when Facebook started coming coming around. And um, what I compared myself to a lot was people on TV, right? Like Teen Mom, Jersey Shore, um, those types of shows were really big. I mean, maybe not Teen Mom is the greatest example for this one. But, um, you know, like Jersey Shore and, and all those type of um, reality shows were really big. And I remember watching all these people on TV and being like, oh my God, they have so much money. They're out doing all these fun things and traveling and exploring and whatever. And then, you know, these people now are coming out with like books about how they were, you know, had struggled with eating disorders or mental or physical abuse when they were younger or grief because they've lost somebody. And this entire time they're putting on this persona, like everything's good and dandy. They're, you know, making all the money and doing all the stuff and all the partying and they look fabu fabulous and gorgeous. 
And truth be told, they struggled just as much as I did. But the problem was, is that I was comparing myself to them. I was constantly trying to be them. Like, oh, I'm going to do my hair exactly like this. Or, oh, I'm going to wear these clothes. Or, oh, I'm going to be this certain weight to be like this person. And that person hated themselves, right? It, they went on a self-love journey and found themselves. And now they're on the other side of it. And they have a beautiful, amazing family. But back then, I was, I was hating myself for not being that. And the truth be told is that they hated themselves because they were comparing themselves to other, to other people. When the truth is, is that you just have to love yourself for who you are, right? I had to discover that and they had to discover that. And whether, you know, you're rich or poor or whether you're, um, you know, white, yellow, purple, black, brown, whatever color you are, whether you're... Um, uh, sick or not sick or either you're a teen mom or you're you know just having fun in high school or whatever the thing is it doesn't matter it doesn't matter I'm having trouble coming up with examples the point is is that whatever um stage you are in your life that is good enough right as long as you're doing your best to be the best version of yourself that doesn't mean change and be like somebody else, be the best person, version of yourself, which means making good choices and doing things that make you happy, not other people. You're not them. You're yourself. Listen to what I'm saying. Do things that make you happy without permission from other people. As long as you're not harming anybody or, you know, running amok, but do things that make you happy. Be around people that you enjoy wear things that you like, do things with your hair that you want, do the type of makeup that you want. Stop comparing yourself because, and stop trying to not letting people inspire you, but try to be like them in a negative way, right? Because you're not worth it. So you're trying to be like them as opposed to them inspiring you because guess what? They're not you. They're not you and you're not going to be happy. That's why I love this quote so much. Comparison is a thief of joy because that's exactly what it does. It takes your joy and makes you feel worthless. And that is not true at all. And you don't need that in your life. And I don't want you to go through dealing with all that stuff like I did forever. I mean, look right now I have makeup on. I, you know, my hair is brushed for once on a video. I'm wearing a nice sweater, but guess what? I'm in pajamas, you guys, because you only see this part of me. You don't see my second half. 99% of the time when I come on here, I put on a bra because I have to and you don't see my bottom half and I'm like wearing underwear or something. My house is a mess. I got dishes in the sink. I'm in my room. It's clean right now. I mean, I know a lot of times you guys can like see my bed in the background. There's clothes on it and stuff, but you know what? I don't care because I'm not trying to be perfect. The point is what you see on this little nine by 16 um, inch video screen thing is not real life. This is 1% of my life, of anybody else's life. So please, 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 please put down the phone, turn off the TV and just love yourself. All right, guys, I'm gonna hop off now. This is getting a little long, but I love you. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and a good start to your week and an amazing school week this week. Love you guys, I'll talk to you soon.